Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to be back with you. And I know it's been a little while since I've made a video. There's been COVID-19 and a bunch of other life changes that have been happening. So I do apologize for not being back, but I'm here now. And before we go any further into the video, I'd like to ask you guys if you want to click that subscribe button and also click the bell. That'll give you guys notifications when I post my new videos and I will be posting more soon. So just letting you guys know. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing a review of the new AOA Pro Wear Foundation and this is from Shop Miss A and if you're not familiar with Shop Miss A they are a really inexpensive makeup store and they have tons of products from makeup brushes to lashes to beauty sponges and so much more. Most of it is a dollar so it's super affordable and I absolutely love it. I picked up two of these just in case if the tone didn't match my skin because obviously on a computer it's hard to tell on the monitor if it's going to match you or not. So I picked the two that seemed the most close to my skin tone. So now let's get on into this video and find out what this foundation is all about. So I brought you guys in a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. First of all, I'm going to see how these foundations look color-wise. So I'm going to use the back of my hand and just take a peek. This one is shade Porcelain and this one is shade Ivory. And I can tell already, even in the bottle, let alone on my hand, that the ivory is a lot more of a yellow, almost peachy undertone, whereas the porcelain is a bit more of a light yellow with a hint of pink. I don't know if these are going to match my face, to be honest. I'm a little bit of both. I'm more of a neutral undertone where I've got a little bit of yellow, but I've got a little bit of pink. So I'm hoping these will work for my face. So to apply my foundation today, I'm going to be using two different types of tools. I'm going to be using my Mochi Blender. This is also from AOA. And then I'm also going to be using a brush, and this is my AOA F4 high def brush and it's the same brand so I'm going to be trying these out with this foundation and see what happens. I'm really hoping the beauty sponge works better because I personally like using my beauty sponge more than I do a brush but let's just go ahead and see what happens. So I'm going to put a little bit of both just like how I swatched it on my hand. Okay so I got on the back of my hand. I'm going to mix these two. Hopefully we'll get a nice shade match. So I went ahead and mixed these shades together to see if I'm able to get a match for my skin. But I can tell just by looking at the swatch on my hand that it is already getting kind of dry. I don't know if that's noticeable on camera or not, but I can tell just by looking at it, it's a bit more on the matte side. It almost looks powdery. So I am going to go ahead and prime my face. I'm going to be using the e.l.f. All the Feels Facial Oil. I just recently got this one a couple weeks ago and I've been absolutely loving it. It's very hydrating. That's why I want to go with this. It's not technically a primer, but it is more of like an oil-based face serum. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it on there because my skin's been a little bit dry. I used to be more combination oily. Now I'm starting to become more combination dry, almost more on the dry side than anything. My skin is definitely changing, but I'm also in my early, almost mid-20s. So that could be why. I just want to make sure my face is nice and hydrated before I apply this foundation. And also a quick tip, if you're a person that has a lot of redness in your skin, this is a great product because I tend to have a lot of redness and pigmentation because I do have allergies as well. This helps to really calm my skin and make it nice and smooth and more of an even complexion. Okay, so now I feel like my face is a nice smooth canvas ready for this foundation. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of the foundations. I'm gonna mix both, about a pea size amount of each, which might be a lot, I'm not too sure. I guess we'll find out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my blender and I'm gonna mix the two shades here. Hopefully this will be an okay match for my skin. And I'm gonna start applying. I'm gonna use my mirror here just to make sure I'm getting proper application. I just want you guys to be able to see as well, so I do apologize if I'm looking this way. Also, I do tend to put foundation on my eyes. I know like some people, they're like, oh, I'm just gonna put concealer, but I just like the evenness of a full canvas. Wow, so this is definitely full coverage and I didn't really put that much. I still have a lot on the back of my hand. I don't know if it also has to do with the fact that I put a little bit of like an oil primer on my skin beforehand, but I do think that really helped to spread this foundation nicely because on the back of my hand, it was starting to get a bit dry. I wouldn't say necessarily cakey, but it is getting more powdery on my hand versus what's happening with my face. I know this isn't a good match, so I'm just bringing it down to my neck. So now I'm going to go onto my brush and I'm going to get some foundation. I'm going to get a little bit more foundation because the back of my hand already dried out. You do have to work kind of fast with this foundation because it's more of a powdery matte texture. I definitely feel like I got a lot more coverage with the sponge, but I will say 
I feel like it looks more of a natural finish with the brush. So I guess it depends if you're going for a more full coverage look or if you're wanting just kind of more of a simple coverage look where it looks more like skin. And I feel like because of the oil I put on beforehand, it's giving me more luminosity than I would with just this foundation. So which I actually kind of like because I feel like sometimes when things are too matte, it looks a little bit cakey or fake. Whereas this kind of looks more like natural skin. I'm definitely glad that I put an oil on my face before doing this foundation because the back of my hand is already super dry. So I feel like that's what would have happened with my face. And I know it's not an exact match, so don't come at me. I already know, but I'm just kind of doing a overall foundation review as far as the texture and the finish and the coverage so far. I think it's pretty good. I'm definitely noticing that the Mochi Blender has a lot more coverage than the brush side, but I kind of like the brush side, especially because this isn't a perfect match for my skin. It kind of makes it less noticeable. So as far as setting this foundation, I am going to use a little bit of a translucent powder. So this is the AOA Studio Perfect Setting Powder, and this is in the shade Soft Light, which is basically almost like a translucent. So I'm gonna get a little bit in this lid right here. I don't need too much, because I feel like this foundation is already kind of on the drier side. So I just wanna superficially set it with powder. So I just got a little bit of my brush. This is also an AOA brush that I got in a little set get under my eyes because I tend to have very bad creasing so I tend to go there first and then I want to get into my smile lines also another area I have a lot of creasing and then get my nose because I do have a slightly oily t-zone and just kind of lightly dust it everywhere so powder is done. I definitely feel like my face is nice and set. It doesn't feel tacky at all. I will say this foundation kind of feels a little bit thick on the skin. Like I could tell that I'm wearing foundation. I feel like this side does feel a little bit thinner from the brush applying it versus the blender. I feel like the blender kind of made it just sit on my skin, whereas this one kind of really blended it into my skin. So I think that's one difference that I'm noticing so far. So now that powder's done, I'm going to be going on to the next thing, which is bronzer. And I do not have a Shot Miss A bronzer, which is so sad because everything else I'm using in this video is actually from Shot Miss A. And it's not sponsored at all. I bought all these products myself, but I'm going to be using something that is still a cheaper makeup option. So I have this little e.l.f. palette right here. And I'm going to be using this shade for my contour. And I do have another brush here from AOA. This is the F28 brush. So I'm going to be dipping into that bronzer shade and just applying some to my cheeks. So Shot Miss A was definitely one of those brands that I stumbled upon randomly. So I was watching YouTube and I happened to see a video where a girl was talking about really cheap makeup that she had purchased. And I was a little bit skeptical, you know, because when you see stuff that's really, really cheap, it sometimes feels too good to be true. But nevertheless, I was intrigued, so I watched the video, and it happened to be about Shop Miss A. So I was really excited, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. It seems legit, and I'm so glad I did. I've been purchasing from them so much ever since then. I would definitely say Shop Miss A is very comparable to brands like e.l.f., Wet n Wild, stuff like that. So that's what I really love about them is that you're getting really great quality products for a lot cheaper of a price, which is awesome, especially if you're trying to save money like me. The next product I'm gonna apply is this Lumi blush and it is from AOA and it is in the color Sin. It is absolutely gorgeous. This is what it looks like. It has a little bit of radiance to it, just like the name says without being too shiny, but I really love this blush. And I'm gonna be going in with the AOA High Def brush in F6 and I'll be just like swirling it around in there and then tap off the excess. I just love this blush. It's seriously the most kind of like natural, but at the same time luminous blush I've ever tried. I do like to take my blush and put it on the edges of my face and a little bit on my nose. There we go. Next I have an AOA Studio Wonder Baked Highlighter and this is in the shade Cupcake and this is how it looks. Super pretty. It's got like a nice almost like baby pink champagne shade to it and it's definitely more of a natural shade. It's not too overpowering. So I do like to get my damp mochi sponge just lightly press onto it and then just press onto my skin. I think it's perfect for those days when you want to have a nice glow to your skin. I feel like even if you weren't wearing makeup, this highlighter would just look amazing. So now I'm going to move on to my brows, and this is one of my favorite products from AOA. It's their Sculpting Brow Pencils, 
and I kid you not when I buy these pencils I buy them in like multitudes I'll buy like 10 or so and just have them always in stock that way I never run out of brown pencils but I did recently change my hair color so I switched from the medium brown pencil to the caramel pencil and here is the shade if you're interested in seeing it hopefully the camera will focus so I'm gonna go off camera real quick to do my brows and I'll be back in just a sec Okay, so brows are all done, so now I'm going to move on to the last and final thing for my makeup look today, and it's going to be with the Diamond Lip Gloss, and this is by Shop Miss A, and it is in the shade Posh, and it is a gorgeous pink with purple reflect kind of gloss, and it's not super chunky glitter, which I personally really like because I like my gloss to be nice and smooth, and this one is absolutely amazing. I'm going to go ahead and apply this really quick. I just love their glosses. They're so smooth. They're not sticky whatsoever, which is actually one of my biggest lip gloss pet peeves. I hate sticky lip gloss. So lip gloss is done and I absolutely love the shade. I feel like it's so nice and natural without being too sparkly or too glittery and it definitely is super smooth. It doesn't have any sort of grit to it. It's super comfortable on the lips and very hydrating feeling. That's what I absolutely love about this gloss formula. And also it's a dollar so girl it's great so now that my makeup is all done i want to take a closer look and really see what this foundation is doing to my skin so right off the bat just by looking in the mirror i'm noticing that there is a lot of texture to my skin which normally when i apply foundation it looks pretty smooth whereas this one is kind of clinging to my skin and i did put a little bit of that facial oil as a primer but i feel like if i didn't put that this clinging would be a lot worse because it would have been more dry and i definitely can still see my blemishes right here i don't know if you guys can see that but yeah i'm noticing there's some texture and um there's a bit of creasing around my eye area i definitely can notice that. I feel like so far the worst thing is probably my nose and maybe my forehead. I feel like those areas look really clingy. My cheeks aren't as bad, but they do still have some texture on them. I feel like I have mixed feelings about this foundation. And I mean, it's only $1.55, which is super, super cheap. But with that being said, I do feel like this is not giving me the type of look I want my skin to have. It definitely doesn't look smooth like it usually does. It definitely doesn't have a natural skin finish. It is more of a satiny matte finish, but because I put the oil underneath, it kind of gave it a little bit more luminosity, but not by much. I think most of the luminosity we're seeing is my highlighter. I can still see a lot of my blemishes. So I will say that if you maybe put concealer, maybe that might help. But at the same time, I feel like because this foundation dries so quickly, it might cause breakage, even just movement of the foundation, and you might just expose your skin instead of actually covering it with concealer. For the price you're getting this foundation for, I definitely would say it is a very high coverage. However, I do feel like it is very clingy to the skin and very drying. I do feel like that's a setback for me for this foundation. Not only the texture of my skin was an issue, but the skin tone was a problem for me. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I think on Shop Miss A's website, they had five shades for each skin tone. So like if you were light skin tone, there was like about five shades or four shades. Then you went down to medium and then to dark. So I feel like there wasn't enough shade ranges. Like for me, for example, this definitely doesn't match my skin. I'm a lot more of a pink lighter tone, whereas this foundation was very yellow. So even if I used the ivory by itself or the porcelain, it was not gonna match for me. So that is a little bit of a bummer. I definitely like a foundation that is just my color so I don't have to mix anything else with it, especially because foundations can be kind of picky when you mix different formulas together. I hope maybe they come out with more shades and then that would kind of make it a little bit easier to use. But yeah, as far as shades go, I'm not really impressed. So in terms of product value, I definitely would say this on the higher scale just because you are getting pretty full coverage foundation for a very cheap price but at the same time you have to deal with the skin texture and the skin tone if it's not the correct shade for you so i will say this is probably about a three out of five for me now i will say the buildable aoa satin foundation is absolutely amazing compared to this one this one is a lot thicker of a foundation so it's harder to get away with your skin tone being a little bit off or even just the texture of the skin, whereas this one is a lot more natural and this one is definitely more of a skin finish than it is of a full coverage finish. Now you can build this up and it will give you full coverage or you can use a concealer with it and it's just perfectly fine that way. But I do 
prefer this one so much more than this new one right here. But if you haven't tried either of these foundations, I highly suggest you go and try it just because you can tell for yourself if this is something that you would like to wear and that you feel like will look best on your skin. So overall, would I repurchase this? I don't think I would just because of the skin tone options, unless they expand it more, and also the texture on my skin. I just don't really like having that really dry, clingy texture. But I will say that the other satin foundation is a really good one, so I highly suggest that one. All right, guys, so that completes my review for the new Pro Wear Foundation from Shop Miss A. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to answer you back. And as a quick reminder, don't forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell so you know every time my videos come out. That way you guys don't miss on any new content. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. You're amazing, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.